In this video, I am talking about how to think about a problem where you have to copy data from one sheet to the other. So the problem statement here is that I have one sheet and data set in one sheet and I want to copy it to the other. Now what we should avoid doing here in this kind of problem is assume that the columns and the rows are going to be the same when you are going to copy it the other side because the columns might change and the rows might change and when you want to copy this data one one next to the other then you need to make sure that you take all the rows and all the columns so when you put them one aside the other you can put one in one column and other in the other column and then do the other computation that's one way of looking about it to do that we need to look at things like uh, rows.count and rows.column so that we don't hard code the value of the rows and columns we want to ship. To do that um, we have to use the range command and rows.count and columns.count to go to the column. If you remember we talked about range and cell command that in the cell and range we can give the first and the last cell of, uh, uh, of the rows. Now there are some limitations this is uh, probably a bit too advanced but there is a strange thing in Excel that if you write something in any cell and if you delete it it's still going to count this as a range so the range dot column would get reset up till this point but right now if this file is auto generated we don't expect these kind of uh, anomalies to happen but in the more robust code we would have to take care of that So to understand how the cell function works and the range function work, in the range function we would give the range like this from A2 to A5. So what I have done is that in the range function I have defined which cells I want to go which would be rows.count and columns.count and 1 comma 1 is my first cell. There are various assumptions that are led when I make this kind of an arrangement which means that the starting cell would be always 1 comma 1 and the rows dot count for this uh, would be the number of rows and the number of columns I told you there is a deficiency or a problem in this that sometimes when you delete this this might also consider it as the rows but that's that's rare I think they might have removed that so this is a play function so what I'm doing in this play function is that I'm defining a range from 1 comma 1 to rows comma 1 comma count and in this range I can get any value that I want and loop around the value. So I'm going to use this value to copy data from sheet 1 to sheet 2. So a better idea when you do this kind of stuff is you create a small play function and then uh, do it over that because if it, you the error handling in VBA is terrible it never gives you any detail about why the function failed so it says you did not define something so in this in the range function we define the cell where we want to write that so we want to copy from cell 1 comma 1 to the last row and the last row dot count then we go to sheet 2 and we want to paste it starting from 1 comma 1 so this is the first way what this would do is that I'm going to delete sheet 2 sheet 1 has this data and we try to run this it's going to get pasted on sheet 2 Now we need to add a feature such that we copy two sheets and paste it in the third sheet. To do that we have to first uh, copy both the sheets, paste one and paste uh, the one beside the other. So we might need to uh, store the variable in a temporary fashion. So what now my task is that I have sheet one and assume I have sheet 2 
this will be my sheet two. I want to paste them in the third sheet such that it would be one beside the other. So the country would be beside the other. And once I have that, I can do the other VLOOKUPs. Okay. 